Repeat after me. Say, this is my Bible. It is God revealing himself to me. In it, he shows me. He's the faithful covenant-keeping God. Through my trust in his word, he includes me in his covenant. Therefore, I am who the covenant says I am. And I do what the covenant says to do. And I receive everything the covenant says is mine. I'm a believer, not a doubter. So I have eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit of God is delivering to the people of God. And I'm not only a hearer. I do what I hear. And God performs his word in my life just like he promised. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, he said, you advancing and possessing your greatest expectations in 2024, prospering more and more. Glory to God. I just remind you that he said, you know, that it would be apparent to all looking on. What? You're profiting in the kingdom of God. Amen. Um, so, uh, we, we received God's word uh, for this year, and we've been digging into it, so to speak, or he's been, you know, peeling back some layers, giving us some direction as well, how to um, ensure that we walk in what he says. Because just God says, he says it, that doesn't make it automatic. It makes it true. But we need to cooperate or collaborate or move in what he shares with us so it can come to pass in our lives, it can be fulfilled. So that's what we've been doing. And uh, uh, you might recognize the outline. So you should be able to tell me, number one, he's telling us, yeah, H Henders, he says, you got to eliminate what? <laughs> Y'all got that one. Yes. You eliminate. He's not, he's not going to eliminate. You got to eliminate. You got to shut it down. You got to eliminate what hinders you from following, right. obeying, being a doer, right. following Jesus. Uh, let's take a look again at Hebrews um, yeah, let's take a look back at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It's right there. Let's, let's read it together. It says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us decide every weight and sin which so easily snare us, and let us run with endurance the pace that is set before us. Glory to God. So we're, we're, we've been breaking that down, working with that. <clears throat> um, again, God's encouraging us. He said, you have all this great cloud of witnesses uh, to, to, to show you, to prove to you that God can use anybody who accepts his word. That's, that's, that's what that cloud, you know, this is chapter 12. It's right after chapter 11. And these are all kind of folks from all different backgrounds, all different kind of, you know, experiences. Yet God did the same thing with each and every one of them. He brought his word to pass. He caused them to overcome. So you can never forget. But then along with that, he said, because you have all these examples. Let me say this again to you. All those people uh, in chapter 11, see, that he's mentioning those are your family, literally. That, those, those are your ancestors. More so than the people you might have grown up with. These people belong to you. You belong to them. Anyhow, along with this, Encouragement, he says, so you pay attention to what they did, though. See, they didn't make excuses. They did what you can do. They've showed you, and by their way of example, their encouragement, you can follow along in the footsteps of all. The, the trail's already there. It's already been blazed. 
Amen. But what it requires is that, number one, what? We lay aside. See, God's not going to do it. No one's going to do it for us. But we can, and we can choose what? To just lay aside. Not fight, not overcome. Glory to God. Not battle. Just what? Leave it there. Glory to God. Cast it all on him. Just lay it aside. And the first thing, we're still dealing with the first thing, which are the weights. The weights that, you know, when you're running a race, weight is not good. Let me carry those barbells down. Or no, no, you get rid of all that would uh, weigh you down. Why? It's going to slow you down. It's going to wear you out unnecessarily. It's going to resist you. It's going to do everything to prevent you from what? Finishing. <laughs> so God has a bright idea. Drop it. Lay it aside. Put it over there. Don't check on it. Just lay it aside and, and go. And so we've been dealing with, with, with the weights. And I believe today we might get to the sin as well. Watch out now. Huh? It's two things. We can't, the, the word and in the scripture, you can't, you can't make them equate to one another. You can't, oh, they're the same thing. No, the and means they are separate and distinct. They're, they're different things. So we're still dealing with uh, some uh, things that may prompt you to identify weights that the Holy Spirit can show you, and maybe even more, that you can what? Lay aside. You know something about it? <clears throat> The thing about us, how God made us, and it, it has positive sides, but also has negative sides. Um, you can take more than you think. Now, we're talking about this on the negative side. You'd be surprised what you're carrying along for no good reason. The pain you're putting up with serves no purpose. And you're so used to it, you don't pay it any attention but it's still, it's painful and is not beneficial. I'll never forget my first pair of orthotics. <laughs> Don't know what that is, Google it. And, uh, you know, I've, I've played sports all my life, and, and so I, I was obviously playing sports. But I don't remember exactly why. I kind of have an idea why, why I went to the doctor. Um, I guess it was pain. And uh, uh, a, a podiatrist, to be exact, and they got all excited. Woo! And I'm in some case study somewhere. <laughs> I was not excited. They were excited. It's the worst case we ever seen. You could take you could take it down a few notches. Just that, you know, like I mean, they were genuinely there. Come here and look. Sheesh. Bottom line, when they got over themselves, their excitement, they they treated me. They came out with something like, "Okay, need orthotics." This is this is this is this is a while ago. And um, so there's a whole process and this and that, and they, and they make it. And I'll never forget when, you know, they called me in. They arrived, they're here. Back then, they don't ship you stuff and all that stuff. They don't trust you to put it in your shoe yourself, put it on in there. But anyhow, so I remember going down there and looking, weird thing, and put it in the shoe. And I said, okay, um, try them on. You know, put, you know, put your shoes on. Try, try them on. So I, that's what I did. And at first, I thought they hurt. Y'all ain't get it. I didn't realize that they were stopping the pain. So why'd you think they hurt? Because I'm used to the nonstop dulling pain. And so right feels wrong. None of y'all know nothing about that. Y'all sitting there every week like that. That's what some of y'all deal with. Every week coming in, like, but I'm so used to right. But it, I mean, wrong. But it ain't right. I don't want to change. 
God don't care. He told you to put down the weight. So you and him are going to be at odds until you decide to put down the weight. He's not going to say, oh, you don't want to put it down? Okay. He's, he's not. So you, you're going to be in that dulling pain. And then it was a few, just a few moments later, I'm like, why did y'all do this? What's wrong with y'all? Why didn't you give me these a whole lot early, earlier? Anyhow, praise the Lord. Just an example. You're made like that. I mean, every, all of us do. There's pain. That, because if, if, okay, all of you are wearing clothes right now. Thank you. And whether you know, so you don't even pay it any attention. All your nerves feeling every little piece of your clothing. And you, but you just sitting there, you, well, now you, now you, now you, now you feel it because you, I brought it to your attention. You don't think about it at all. Because you quit, you can't go out throughout, throughout your day thinking how this shirt feels and how these socks and all this, this and that. You ain't got time for all that. So, I mean, there's a purpose in it, right? But not, not when it comes to this stuff. Weight's got to go. Okay, so don't allow yourself to be distracted. See, they're draining away energy. They're draining away attention. These what? Weights, these things that are painful, hindering, keeping you from doing all you could do. Right? So don't allow yourself to be what? Distracted. That's what weights serve to do, and, and, and the sin, too, to distract you, to take your attention away from what? God's promise. What God said. Because as long as you stay with what God said, what he promised, you focus on what he promised instead of the process, you're going you, you to come into the fulfillment of that promise. But if you start getting bogged down and complaining and looking at and worrying about the process, how long? Why? You, you ain't going to get there. Or you're going to get there a whole lot, 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 lot later. Walking by faith is only looking at God's promises, what he said. Only. Not looking at what he says in the face of what I'm looking at. That's not faith. That is not faith. That is mentalism. That's why so many people struggle God doesn't need your help. He didn't ask for your help. He enlists your cooperation. It is different. He brings it to pass. You don't. You can't. So we need you to cooperate in the greatest way. You've got to stay focused only on what he has said, his promises, what he has spoken. You cannot be distracted to looking, what I got to go to? Where are we going? What? It's immaterial. You want that? That's where you're going. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You know what David didn't do? He didn't describe anything other than it's a valley. He said, I fear. Me, it's what? I fear. He's looking at, I fear no evil because you were with me. Ain't nothing to fear when you're walking with God. So why look at it? We walk by faith, not by your senses. People are still trying. I don't know what they're doing with that. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to people in here. You got God's promise, and you taking God's promise, and looking at stuff is not the way it's done. It is not faith. No, zero faith. It is not faith. It's still the mind. When you're in faith, you just look. What would you say, God? Let me talk about what you said, God. Let me look again. Let me keep what you said. You're bringing, you're only watching over what you said to bring it to pass. So why would I be doing something? And you told me, lay all the stuff aside. So I'm looking at what you said, and that's all I'm looking at. So if I lay aside, let it go, leave it over there, then I'm going to live in the fulfillment of what you said, Lord. Amen. So uh, we, we started uh, on this list talking about 
some some things that are these weights that people need to consider and think about. What was the first thing we looked at? Offenses. Then what did we look at? Opinions. Opinions. And then what did we look at? Oh, that's where you are. Okay, 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 okay. So just by way of reminder, again, it's impossible for anyone ever to offend you. That doesn't mean you don't take offense, but wherever you take an offense, you better lay it aside. And we went through example after example. You can't even get offended at God. I wouldn't get offended at God. Most people are. <laughs> and Jesus said, can't be blessed. He said, blessed is one who does not take offense at me. I went through some scenarios there. Then we talked about opinion. Uh, can you all r- remind me of the, pen- the case of the opinions we looked at? Okay. Bl- blind Bartimaeus. Okay, we got blind Bartimaeus. People told him what? Why did they tell him to shut up? Because he's crying out and, d- and talking about and shouting about God's promise. And they told him what? And he did what? Why are you going to go with opinions? Those opinions don't get cashed. What got cash? God's promise. And he's like, I can't see. And then I want to join on his side. Sucker. Man. What if he listened to them? He'd be on their side blind. Uh, what, what was another one we looked at? Another. Okay. The, 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 they came across a man who they knew was born blind. And their opinion was, Jesus, Jesus, tell us, whose fault is it? Who are we blaming? Whose sin are we blaming? His or his mom and daddy? Jesus specifically, clearly said, I'm not going to get into that, but he, he said, first thing he said, neither. Meaning what? Him nor the parents. None of them sin to cause this to happen. Amen. Um, but it went further than that. Because people got mad because he, the one who was born blind, everybody knew that's the blind kid. Well, he's a man now. And now everybody, what, sees he can see. And that caused a problem. Because people had opinions that he shouldn't see. Wow. Ain't that? Y'all say, that is really? That's in the Bible. People had the opinion that he should go back to blind. It ain't right. Let's be specific. Who were the people who had that opinion? Religious people. Those great religious people. They were the only ones that said, this is a problem. Amen. It was their wrong, evil opinion. Because of who did it and how we did it. And they caused a huge, they, they, they called a case. And oh, Inquest. Investigation. Not willing. Don't expect people to give up their opinions because you're right. Y'all, y'all, y'all missed that. Don't expect people to give up their opinions because you're right. What, what was another example of opinions we saw? See, we're all over the place. They got, they, they got opinions against Jesus. Because they didn't think he the one should heal them and how he healed them. They don't matter. Jesus, Jesus says, oh, I'll take it back. No, it don't work like that. What, what was the next example? Washing hands. Washing hands. Here come the religious people again. <laughs> Getting mad at the disciples. Y'all don't wash your hands when you eat. And Jesus told them, why? <laughs> what good is that? Whatever goes in your mouth doesn't go in your spirit. Your heart goes in your stomach. And you do your business and it comes out. It's literally what he said. But it's what comes out of the mouth that it proceeds out of the heart. What a person says, that's what can defile them. And then, and you know, what happened? They, their opinion, they didn't like that. That doesn't agree with our opinion. Who again? Who are we talking about again? <laughs> the religious folk. These the same ones. They're the same people in the gospels. And they're over <laughs> all their attempts. They just refuse. It's not like different groups coming around. Pay attention. It's like, 
They go back to Jerusalem, come back out. They go over there, come back, and they come back. They sent spies. Spies say, that you ain't ever going to be right until you side with the right one. You got to hang your opinion. I mean, you have a right to them, which is why I always tell people, you know, you got a right to be wrong, but, you know, I ain't changing. God gave you the right to be wrong, but I'm not changing. And then his disciples said, they, didn't, they, they were offended at what you said. Again, they were offended, Jesus, at what you said. And he said, leave me alone. I don't care. Everyone ain't of my father. He said, every plant that my father hasn't planted, they're going to be plucked up and burned. It's like, no, nah, just leave, leave me alone. But you better hold on to the truth. God didn't tell you go fix people. Praise the Lord. And then, did I give you another one? These filthy religious folk, I mean, this is a, this is a whole other cat. These filthy religious folk, these ones, knew about, found out, and, 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 took the woman, left the man caught in a very act of adultery and brought him before Jesus. I mean, can you, you can't, I, you know, it amazes me how wicked people are so bold. But disciples be all squirrely. And then the disciples are in trouble because Jesus said the righteous are bold as a lion. And you letting them out bold you? They wicked. They sitting around here. I mean, our system of law calls that entrapment. <laughs> and probably bordering on aiding and abetting. They think this is a good idea. Okay, y'all ain't here. And so they drag her before him, right? This and that. And what, Moses said, what say ye? I'm bigger than Moses. That's what I say, says Jesus. Moses ain't got nothing on me. Now, he got what he got from me, but I bring the truth. He gave the law. I have the truth about it and grace. Yeah, that's how Jesus wrote, man, all, all through it. I mean, read this. I know you've heard of old. What would you hear of old? What Moses said. He, he went through this and had a whole conversation about this. I know you know from old time it's been said, and I don't care. I'm telling you. That's just what he said. I, I, and I tell you. Whoa. Has that image of, of, of that, 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 that strung out, burned out, <laughs> hippie of Jesus been annihilated in your consciousness yet? That stanky, stringy-haired, homeless-looking dude who came to deliver the homeless and wash their feet? If that strung out look is the look, why are he washing their feet? Why are he delivering them? Why are he dragging us all into it? The boy was fine. Read your, okay, read your Bible. And dressed well. And why was no... No one ever had to look for him. Show me a scripture. We can't find him. Where he at? <laughs> he hiding from them, and they still finding him. Mm, there he go, right there. That, that, that's the one. He ain't even a little sad. I apologize. I guess it got distracted there a little bit. Okay. So <clears throat> you said that's as far as you got. Well, that's not all the weight that followers of Jesus are going to have to lay aside and stop being distracted by. You're never going to be able to go to Jesus and say, but I was offended. <laughs> You're never going to be able to go to Jesus and say, but they said. <laughs> it's not going to work. And you're not going to be able to go to Jesus and say, but look what they did to me. 
because we're going to go on to persecution now. <laughs> yeah, you, you, <laughs> you better hang persecution too. He told you it's coming. In fact, when Jesus talked about persecution, he said the only way you're going to get a hundredfold, the maximum right now, of everything you sow in order to follow me in this kingdom, in order for you to get a hundredfold of that now, in this time, in this life, in this planet, right here, not on the other side, you're going to have to receive it with persecution. Notice, we've seen that throughout here too. From Bartimaeus, all these people, they got, in tr- they got in trouble on the front end and the back end. And it was usually worse on the back end because it's persecution because they can't deny it. So they got to fight it harder. So persecution. But cur- persecution can also be up front. And I think that's what's tripping up most people today is the threat of it. Like, it's persecution. It's guaranteed. And you ought to eat it every morning. It's the breakfast of champions, like napalm. (sighs) Toughen you up. So let's go to Acts chapter 4. Might as well jump right into the church. The real. Church isn't a building. It's not a denomination. It may not be you. The church is people. It's a gathering. It's an assembly of those Jesus called out. That's literally what. Ecclesia, ecclesia, however people want to say it, means. It's, it's the same thing under the old covenant. The word church in the new covenant, Greek and synagogue under the old, coming out of the old, all, it's the same thing. It means an assembly. It means a gathering. Are you with me? But what makes the gathering? Who's gathering them? I try to go to my such and such lodge meeting. Uh, just, you're a moose, you're a, a rotary, don't know what a rotary is, you're a Kiwanis, I don't know what a Kiwanis is, but that's what you is, because that's the gathering. The assembly of God's people is God, they're, they're children of God, they're, amen, disciples of the Lord. So Acts chapter 4, this is really something, like this carries on for three chapters. And we're just dropping into it. Uh, so let's go to, let's see. Uh, Acts chapter 4. This thing is going on for three chapters. Peter and them, they healed one dude. One guy. And the people spin out. And it goes on for quite a while here. Uh, it just, re- just to remind you, I believe it's, it's, so it starts in chapter 3, I believe. You know, they are at the hour of prayer. In fact, it might start in chapter 3. They go up into the uh, temple to pray. And they laid this guy out there every day. Couldn't walk and all that. Laid him out there every day to, to beg. Mm-hmm. Kind of telling. Mm-hmm. People go to worship. Ought to be loaded. Mm-hmm. Anyhow. <laughs> he <laughs> Every day they brought him there to, for these people to pass him so he'd get something. And he got stuff because he, he expected all this. He expected because he looked at, P- Peter said, look at, look, look at me and John. Look, look at me. Look. And he looked expecting to get something. And Peter says, man, give me no money. But that which really belongs to us. See, money come and go. But that really belongs to us, the name of Jesus. Get up. And he took him by the right hand. Boom. Not y'all like, try it. Feel, you feel better? No, get up. And. All of a sudden, he lip, leaping, dancing, skipping. He healed like that. And then everybody, woo! They came yelling and screaming and celebrating. And, and then Peter and them had, what was that? Don't look, at, don't look at us like we did that. Y'all could do this. Anybody could do this. This, 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 this. this is the power of God on display for all those who would believe. They're like, wow. But then the religious, they're always late, too. This isn't right, this isn't that. And so they bring persecution, physical persecution, emotional persecution. They, they start persecuting the apostles. Um, and so if you look at verse, let's see. <laughs> they, 
He didn't want anybody else to get healed. Why do you fool with religious folk, man? Listen, listen. No more. We can't let no one else get healed. Whoa. So we're going to threaten these guys. And so if you look at verse 18, they called them, talking about the apostles, and what? Commanded them not to speak at all, nor to teach in the name of Jesus. Because they, in their investigation, they made very clear to them that it's in the name of Jesus this man. What did Paul, Peter say? Peter said, I'm not giving you money, but what I do have, the name, see, the covenant name, the name that's mine, the covenant name of Jesus, get up and walk, and boom. So it was rehearsed and reviewed, and uh, so they knew, and so we got we to command them not, how do you command somebody not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus? But watch this. But Peter and Yochanan, Jonah, John, answered and said to them, the council, the Sanhedrin and all of them, Watch this. Whether it be right in the sight of God to listen to y'all more than to God. Watch this. Watch this. Judge you or you decide. And then they went about their business. And they tried to throw him in prison and beat him and stuff. But God sent his angel. Just, just a little one of his little agents. Just go down there, and we have brought him out of brought him out of prison. No one knew, but the angel told him when he brought him out of prison, make sure you go back and do, just do the same thing you did yesterday. <laughs> Don't you stop now. Oh, y'all missed that. Y'all ain't get that. You gotta. The, the weight's not there. So why are you gonna change what you do? And so, I mean, it's a long thing. We can't talk about this whole thing. I mean, it's there. You can read it. But let's go to chapter 5 now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they're, they're supernaturally delivered. Why? Because they're not quitting. They're not giving up. They're standing on faith. They're standing on what? God's word. They're being obedient. They're being disciples. Yeah. Yeah. Look, let me see. You want us to obey you rather than God? No, say just spun them out. Y'all think about that. Yeah. And they went about their business. After they really told them, we ain't stopping. All we can do is talk what we know. It'd be weird if we talk about something we didn't know. Ooh, imagine that. It happens all the time and all these little. Mm-hmm. But they said, uh, we, we, we can't. Gotta keep, so they kept on doing what they do. Amen. Amen. And so they can't find her. They send for them. They're embarrassed now. They can't find them. There's no people you're looking for. They, they, they. They're back in the temple. They're back out there in the public. Teaching, preaching, carrying on, delivering folk. Y'all with me? Yeah. Uh, where should we pick up here? Let's, let's look at verse 26. And, and then went the captain. You know, the temple had their own guards and all that stuff. With the officers... And brought them without violence, for they had heard the people, lest they should have been stoned. Look, now, table to turn. They didn't go to the prison to get them out. They, they, are, they, they went out in the public square where they were, and they had to ask them to come. Couldn't bring them back because the people would kill them. We need to get back to that. Wow. Why, why we try to exterminate religious folk? Okay, praise the Lord. Any, anywho. Getting in the way of your blessing. And when they had brought them, they sat before the council, that's the Sanhedrin, and the, highest, the high priest, excuse me, asked them, saying, didn't we tell you strictly, straightly, strongly, command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, we, you have filled Jerusalem with the doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. Well, no, we're obeying. We, God commanded us to tell everybody. Now, the blood and all that, you already did that. Because that, that. they literally said, if you read your Gospels, not the Jews, the religious Jews, literally said what, that's why they said it, because they're guilty. They said, let, let Jesus' blood be on us. Because Pilate, a Gentile, the heathen was, 
I'm washing my hands of this. This, this, this we, I, I've, I've, I've investigated them, beaten them. Dogs, ain't no, he ain't worthy of no prison, nor let alone death. They want what? Crucified. He said, that's on y'all. They said, that's right. Let that blood be on us and our children. Now, people run around. That's why I make it very clear. People run to see the Jews. No, no, the Jews didn't say that. The Jews did not say that. The religious Jews said that. There's a difference. And they're the ones talking here again. Amen. Because there's a whole bunch of people just stick with the word. Just don't be adding to or taking away from. You know, the Jews killed Jesus. Oh, shut up. No, they didn't. And neither did the Romans. Jesus gave himself up. <laughs> Anywho, praise the Lord. Trying to mm, do too much with it. Man, you shouldn't like these people because they're responsible for Jesus' death. You know, they're cursed because he was a fool. Read the Bible. Jesus said, ain't nobody can kill me. I like to see him try. My father gave me the power to lay my life down only to give me the power to take it back up. And no one can kill me. He could have wiped out the entire regiment, let alone the four or five guys of the regiment who crucified him. He could have just snapped his finger. He said it too. He said, I'll get my angels right now. So he's, he's doing it. He's laying himself down. But here go religious folk. On what other side is that? You know, those people are cursed, or we should curse them because they they're responsible for Jesus' breath, death. It's just it's just nonsense. It's nonsense. Not accurately dividing the word of God. Not even reading it. Amen. Someone needed to hear that. Praise the Lord. Are you in chapter five? Are you what verse? 28, we didn't finish it. Oh, no, we did. Now verse, uh, well, I read, yep, okay. Didn't we threaten you enough? But look at verse 30. Peter said, remember what they said the first time? You know, whether, it's, you know, we should obey you over God, y'all figure that out. And they went about what? Doing their business. Now look at Peter. And Peter and the other apostles answered and said, y'all didn't figure it out yet. So we're going to tell you this time. We ought to obey God rather than people. Now they go on, now they go on with a whole lot more. But that's what I want. That's the point. They, what, what did they do with persecution? Yeah. Blew it off. <laughs> Lay, oh, what, what? Laid aside. Yeah, yeah. Care what you say. Yeah. Now, let's be clear about that. Yeah. They put them in prison. Yeah, but what happened? The prison couldn't hold them. Why? Because they didn't stop because of persecution. And it only emboldened them. Because now they're back with these chuckleheads again the next day. Look, <laughs> y'all didn't figure it out. You had a whole night to sleep on it. So now we're going to tell you. We're going, we ought to, the right thing to do is for us to obey God. Everybody better obey God than you. And people act like that. See, that, that, that's for you today because you, 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 you better have that settled for you right now. Because you're living in a world, you're living in a country, you're living in a society, and you're living with a government that is outlawing your faith. And it's not going to be an excuse for you not to obey God. Let me say that again. You're not going to oh, well, Jesus, I would have been there, but they passed the law. You ain't getting off. Look, they've already done it. They're doing it more and more. I led you by example. They told us, and I don't care. You cannot meet together because there's germs out there. I never closed this ministry. 
I never shut it down. Cause I don't look. I don't care what you say, governor, president, whoever else. I don't have the authority to do that. No, y'all missed that. I do not. If I'm obedient, if I'm following, I do not have the authority to go in section Hebrews, article 13, subsection, and say, well, that isn't in there. And you can choke on it because I know it. And you can, They never came. They never want to see me. They never want to, you know, handcuff me, bother me or anything else. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was ready. I was ready because I'm get, I'm gonna get mine. No, the wealth of the sinner is laid up for me. I'm convinced it's, it's, it, it can come any number of ways. Try me. I was faced with a choice. Don't tell me it don't work. Don't tell. There were police right outside our door. I think they were wanting to come in. <laughs> they didn't stop y'all. They didn't bother y'all. They didn't interrupt nothing. So you can keep thinking this is fantasy or something else. You live right now where they want to lock you up. And they got you scared thinking you can't say nothing. You better straighten out. You better be saying it on the job. You better be saying it in school. Because they do not have the legal standing yet. They, they're, they're, it's illegal to tell you you got to leave the name of Jesus out. You can't. No, no. You, you don't make. You make exceptions for everybody else, which means you're a bigot, which means you're illegal, and which means I don't need to. You aren't qualified for me to listen to you. You are unqualified for me to listen to you. This is, this, is what, this is what you really need to understand, really get. I mean, really, really practically. It's a balanced walk because God says you must follow the laws of the land if you're going to be a disciple of his. That's a, law, that's a spiritual law. You must follow, obey the laws of the land. Right up until, right up until, and to the point where those laws break God. You know, go against God. Then God going to break them. And you can't hop over there saying, well, see, the law says, God don't. They're talking, you know what I'm saying? You're looking at people talking to the, you know, they don't have the whole congresses and all that stuff. Although our Congress come out of Rome and all that stuff, but you know, they don't like. Look, let me tell you, we ought to obey God over you. I want you to go tomorrow to work, make an appointment with HR, and tell them. You can take out Acts chapter five twenty nine. Oh, they don't like it. Oh, you win. Oh, they're trying to outlaw the Bible and work. Uh oh, that's illegal. You read them. I'm going to obey God and not you. Don't shout me down. I'm trying, I'm trying to free you, trying to liberate you. You might even get paid in the process. So all this talk about mind control, I'm supposed to know and interpret and all. I, I, no, I ain't got no time for that. That's illegal and ungodly. You can't legislate my thoughts. Talking about pronoun this, inclusion that, this and that. You ain't including me. So with your inclusion, you disclude me. You can hang that crap, and I'll see you in court. We can go straight to the Supreme if you want to. Y'all ain't had much luck recently. That's why you want to roar and then shut your face, because your pie hole going to get shut. And you better be bold like this while you can, because they're working on laws. And the Supreme Court thinks they're lawmakers. They're law enforcers. They don't make it any. whole thing is messed up because you don't know checks and balances. See, you run this government, not them. And you, you got to re-educate, remind yourself, like, hold on. There's legislative, executive, and judicial. 
Now you, it's called, that's how it's, it's called, you know where those things come from? The Bible. It's called checks and bi uh, balances. As they're taught here in civics, or they used to, I don't know what civics does no more. <laughs> now, there ain't, uh, it can't be civics anymore. You know, it's, it's, it's propaganda, but you probably think right now that the legislative branch is the Supreme Court. No, the Supreme Court don't legislate. That's the judicial. They're to take the law and decide. Your opinion, we're going to kill you with your opinion. I mean, RGB broke her own laws and broke out and that stuff toward the end, got all nutty. I don't care about your opinion. Keep it to yourself. You're supposed to be on any show. You're supposed to be above that. You're a Supreme Court justice. Boy, it's quiet. You really want to go on record that? Because now you're showing you are unfit. Now you are showing that you are biased. Now you show, ho, 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 ho. Now we know you already were to begin with, but you're not to unduly, unduly influence. You're supposed to go with that law, hear that case, and judge according to that law. They're the judicial. Legislative is Congress, which is two houses. See, we were here. You should have been here Sunday. See, y'all, you know, I, I got to do this because. Y'all need to know this. <laughs> yeah. Congress is made up, the legislative branch, of two houses. One, the Senate, which they usually call Congress people. I, no, they're senators. There's no Congress people, unless you say it like that. Oh, the Congress people. Because there's no such as Congress if you got the Senate or the House. There's no Congress. The Congress means Congress. Con, C-O-N. Teacher Tracy, what's C-O-N? The prefix means together. And alone, you ain't together. And bear with me if you, I know that, well, then tell somebody. Senate are senators. And every state, and there's 50 states, by the way. And, and then there's some territories. They have every state gets two, period, which ain't fair. Because Rhode Island, you don't mean a darn thing to me. <laughs> I'm California. <laughs> Checks and balances. So that ain't, that ain't fair. So you have the House of, well, we got more in the House of Representatives than our people in Rhode Island. <laughs> Balance. If you pay attention and you know the truth and you know how this government was made by you, of you, and for you, it will work a whole lot better Amen. instead of you being dependent on the government. They're going to help me. No, they ain't. They don't even like you. I don't. I ain't say part of the government don't like you. They're, they're, they're not, not, not for your best interest. The government, if you don't hold them in check, like themselves. That's why we showed you quotes cross parties, cross decades, cross the history of this country. That, and all the leaders told you, if you don't know the Bible, did you pay attention to that? They said, you don't know the Bible, this ain't going to work. They didn't say, I'm just going to leave it at that. It was very clear. If you don't. Under, if you don't go by the scriptures, this won't work. Because that's from the beginning. If you go in our founding documents, that is all over. Mm -mm. The government don't make this work. From the beginning, with the you won't call them founding fathers. They all told you very loudly, all of them, this will not work. This is just a piece. They even said this. They, the ones who wrote it, this is just a piece of paper. And as you hold yourself to a higher standard and you live by the scripture, the Bible. So what do you think the enemy went about doing? Getting the Bible and ignorant, unenlightened people. Like, well, that ain't no big deal. 
That's the, that, the Constitution ain't the foundation. The Bill of Rights ain't the foundation. The Scriptures are the foundation. A lot of them people risk their lives even to find an area to begin this experiment. Anywho. You, you, better, you, better, you better already know you're going to tell the government to stick it. You better already know you have no choice but if you want to live to tell the government, talk to the hand. Because I ain't listening. When they what? Cross over what thus says the Lord. And the Lord said, do not forsake. Go like, try not to forsake. It wasn't like, you know, if it's convenient for you, you know. No, it was a commandment. Do not forsake. Especially as you see the day approaching. So as the day approached, what do you think the enemy did? Let's threaten them. Let's tell them to shut down. And I don't care if you like my decision by your opinion or not. I don't care. I did what I did. And here we are. And I left you an example. And you're to follow me as I follow him. So you have no excuse. So you better get ready today. If my employer, if the law, if anybody tries to sit there and say, no, not here. And I'm being very specific. Overstep God, what God has said. You better, you, better, you, better, you, better, you better stand up on that. No, don't stand on your business. <laughs> Jesus didn't stand on business. You better stand on your father's business. Oh, it's quiet in here. That's what it means to be a disciple. Otherwise, <laughs> you're a groupie. You're a looky-loo. You I'm with Jesus. Like all those people and all those crowds we see in the Bible with nothing happening except when a lady comes up in the crowd or sneaks in or a guy speaks out and says, let me, and they get, so they went outside your culture. You're in three dimensions. They went into four dimensions. They went in, they went beyond culture into the kingdom of God. And every single time, They win. It didn't matter who they were. Background, gender, country, whatever else, culture, didn't matter. <laughs> Whoever did that went into the invisible. Some people are starting to call it 4D. You win. I'd rather call it FD because it's a faith dimension. You have sight, smell, taste, touch, and here, for the three-dimensional realm, natural world. I don't, call if you call it, I don't care if you call it 4D, I'll call it FD. Faith leaves the five senses for the three dimensions behind. You trying to operate in the kingdom of God with any of the three of the Ds, or one of the five of the S's, senses, <laughs> is not faith, will not ever work, won't get any kind of results out of the kingdom. We walk by faith, not by sight, which is perception. That word means perception. It's not just means you see, hear, taste, smell, and touch. We don't walk by any of that, which only registers what? It only picks up what? Three dimensions. Gee, I know I must be just, I don't know, I'm just, just slowing you all down here, I guess. So, Pastor, I'm standing on the promise of God where he said this, but how long is it going to take? You ain't standing on nothing. You've done buckled and cry, crawling and everything. You're not standing on faith. You're looking at time. You're looking at the three dimensions. Well, Pastor, how long do I got it? Why? 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 Why is that question even coming up? Because you're looking at the process and not the promise. Yeah. Not you, but you know the person, you know, <laughs> on that side or that side. <laughs> 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 
I didn't observe the woman with the issue of blood saying anything but if I can touch but the hem of his garment, I am healed. Amen. Except there's a whole lot of people out there. You know, it's kind of hot today. What are they going to say about me? What if I'm caught? Well, they're going to kill you if you're caught. Or they have a right to kill you if you're caught. You didn't see any, God did because it didn't happen. That's everybody else in the crowd. So they didn't have anything happen out of faith realm or 4D. She was blind, didn't walk, didn't live by any of that. Who are they going to say if I don't get it? Bye. No shit. Are you, you getting it? Please. I, I, I. Don't act like you're there till you're there. And it's just that simple. It happened just like all these people. I'm, I'm just picking on her. And she did it. And and everybody else was still sitting there with egg on their face. Well, I would do it too, but. Jesus asked, when I return, will I find faith on earth? I said, the Lord, the head of the body, the whole thing said, will I find faith on earth? Not Republicans or Demo Democrats. Not Americans or French folk. <laughs> Not men or women. I wonder if I'm going to find any faith when I return. That was another one of them things I saw in Scripture just sent a chill up my spot. Like, ooh. See, God's not talking to anybody else but you whenever you are reading Scripture. I don't care if it says, and God said to Abraham, Abraham ain't here. He ain't talking to you. I mean, to, he ain't talking to you. At the very least, he's for your benefit. Abraham ain't done. So that's why chills will go up and down my back. Ooh, you talking to me? Hold on a second. So it's my, not yours, it's not, it's not my responsibility to make sure you got faith. Oh no, I don't care. I hate to tell you, that ain't my job. I'm doing my job, and that's to deliver his word. Only faith comes by God through his word. So I'm, I'm doing, but I can't make somebody have faith. I don't care, but I'm going to make sure, I have to make sure. So he's talking to me. He show up. Whenever that is, Gary. Guess what I better be caught with? Faith. I ain't going to be looking at, well, so I, John over there had, had no. That's why nobody has it, because they all think somebody's going to do it. And somebody's nobody's name. Because they're talking about somebody and nobody doing it. And that's why you're going to pray you wish it was a nobody. When there's weeping and gnashing and Mm-hmm. I know. I, I know what he said. He said it to me. I'm like, mm, all right now. See, I this is this is this 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 might be revelation to some of y'all. Y'all paying attention? I don't read the Bible. I don't. I don't think of the scripture about how you think about it. I don't, I don't read the Bible. I, say, I, 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 wonder, I wonder what Ryan thinks about this. No, that, that's revelation because y'all, some y'all again, not you, but left side, right side. <laughs> Dude, you read it, and all you're thinking about is some other person. How you claim you on faith? He only talking to me. Ain't, ain't nobody else here. I can't pass the buck. I can't. I mean, that's the issue going on in here. Right now, y'all listening to me for somebody else. Yeah. The Spirit of God talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> right there. And you're like, mm -mm 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 -mm. <laughs> and all the while, that's why you ain't got faith, because the word is stolen just like that. Yep, yeah? because you fell for persecution, because you're thinking about what they say. What they oh, I'm on point. You didn't think I was. That's why I'm the teacher. 
persecution is a weight you got to drop. Okay, we ain't getting to the sin today. We ain't getting to the sin today. <laughs> right? I'll just tell you that now. But we will, we will, we will hit one, one more. Y'all here? Yes. <laughs> the last one that the Spirit of God gave me to give you, doesn't mean in totality, is worries. Sound familiar? First Peter, chapter 5, 5 through 10. Cast all your cares. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Casting all of because mm -hmm. he cares for you. Worrying is, I don't care if it's normal, it's sin. And people only, you know why people worry? Now again, not you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you why the person next to you is worrying. Because they're walking in the 3D. I'm going to tell you why the person next to you is scared and anxious. Because they're walking by smelling, touching, tasting, hearing, and seeing all in the 3D. where disciples are commanded not to be. Religious folks stay there, but disciples don't live in that land. They live in a kingdom where there's faith. And the God of faith who performs his word that he promised, and well, there isn't much need for anything beyond that. They walk by. Yeah, but you know, so and so they said, they. <laughs> Why are you even? See, the only reason you're trying to tell me is trying to tell me what the. I don't care. So if you know I don't care and you're still trying to do it, you should recognize because you're trapped. And you need to lay it off. It's your choice. It's not a skill. It's not an ability to lay aside. This ain't no ability or skill. Oh, I can't do it. Yeah, you can. That's a lie. It's whether you will or won't. See, it's will. It's choice. Okay, praise the Lord. All right, so let's deal with these, these, these worries here. Let's go to the gospel according to Luke. Y'all all right? Y'all here? All right, we'll have to pick up with this one. All right, y'all, we'll deal with this one, and then we'll pick up from it next week because we ain't got to the sin yet. I know what sin is, Pastor. That's why we'll, we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's be clear. Everybody and their mama know what sin is with no one saying anything. So why are we going to talk about sin? Because of something you're not aware of, something you're not thinking of, but we'll, we'll get there. Uh, where'd you turn? Luke chapter 8. Did I give you the chapter? Oh, my bad. Luke chapter 8. Thought I did. Um, Uh, what's being discussed here is a very familiar parable. Yeah, I hope so, because if you don't understand this parable, Jesus said, you're kind of lost. It's the seed and the sower. Right? Um, so I know you're, you're aware of it. Look at verse 13. In discussing the seed and the sower, God talks about four types of hearts or four types of individuals, four types of soil. Now, anybody can be any of them at any time. It's under their choice, their, their control. That's why he's making us aware. And so now he's going to start here talking about a couple of the various types of people or hearts or soil in the parable. Verse 13 says, this is Jesus talking, right? They on the rock. See, some fell on stony ground. So he says, well, they are on the rock who, when they hear, hear what? The word, the word of God. Receive the what? Word. 
Word of God. With joy. They're excited. <laughs> but they on a rock. Remember we talked about shipwreck in this? this mm -hmm. You can't get shipwrecked without a rock. So hearing the word wasn't a problem. They heard it. Joy wasn't a problem. Joy of the Lord is our strength. But these have no root. They have no depth. They're superficial. They only move by what they hear. Oh, that sounds like 3D. They're still in the 3D realm instead of the FD. Because I don't know. All I can say is what I don't know about you. All I can say what I do know. You know, being an FD for faith, faith dimension in the word, I don't like what God said to me. What he got to say to me? <laughs> I better count it all joy. Now, I know you're different. Yeah, I mean, you, you love it. Yeah. Man, he tell me, you know, all he talk about is me. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he lets his word be known, yeah. and that exposes me. Yeah. And I want to jump out, FD, but I ain't going to hell. I stay in the fire. See, this fire don't burn. This fire burns out impurities. It purifies. And, and he said, everybody got to go through the fire. He said, it ain't going to burn you. Yeah, you'll be saved. But it's going to burn. It's, it's going to burn something. The stuff that shouldn't be there. The stuff that needs to go. Sounds like weights and sin. Y'all with me? He said, they on the rock, they hear the word of God, receive the word of God with joy. These have no root. They're superficial, which for a while, you know, this is in most of the three gospels, you know, temporarily for a season, you know, for a little bit. Um, don't, don't get impressed with a while. I don't know how long the while was. While means you lost. A season means you lost. What? Because there's always an end. And the end Means you lost. There's no end of faith. Faith is now. Because they believe a while, and then what? In time of temptation, they're gone. Some of the other accounts, that means Matthew and Mark, they say, and when persecution arises. It makes it very clear. For the word and my sake, they drop it. Like, you know, them people you talk to and they say, you believe the word of God? You believe those fairy tales and fancies? You know, man wrote that. You believe all of it? You take it literal? And you squealing and caving and crying. I mean, that's, 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 that's some weak persecution right there. But yet, they're the stony people. See, rock sounds good. Yeah, it'll crush you. <laughs> they're being crushed. By, Jesus talked about, look, the rock, we either bust you up, you'll trip over it. That's what it's meant to do. Or it will crush you. It'll, it says it'll grind you into powder. These are being ground into powder. Because they're like, oh, no, I didn't really believe it. In fact, I don't think I'm going to go back there. Off of, off of what some somebody, some nobody, some said. The party lasted until it was over. They had no root in themselves. They were joyful. I, I'm not saying this, y'all. We're just reading it, right? Okay, so temptation came. Mm. Mm. But it's the one who endures temptation. That gets paid. We'll, we'll talk more about that next time. Let's, let's go to verse 14. He says, and, now we're going to talk about a, another group among thorns. They got weeds in their patch. It says, and they which fell, the seed that fell among what? Thorns are the people, the ones, which when they have what? Heard, go forth. And what happens? The chokes. Man. They're, 
Boy, y'all just went all over. I'm, 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 I'm still on the show. They, they what? They went forth and they showed. They didn't say they got choked. They said they went forth and chose. <laughs> I've told you several times. Don't choke. Don't choke now. When do people usually choke? Can't, can't take the pressure. I don't care what sport, whatever it is, what endeavor, what performance it is. Talk about performance anxiety. And it's very, 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 very common. And they choke. <laughs> Which means what? They fail. Right? When it's on the line, winning time, they lose. Y'all know what choke means? What you they, they choke. Can't take the pressure. Let's look at it. Why'd they choke? Worry, anxiety, cares. See the bleed over? Cares and riches and pleasures of life. Well, I ain't going to choke. I'm broke. That's, that's, not, that's, not, that's not how I work. Not how I work. Look, I, won't call no, I won't call no names, but I'm looking at you now. You're broke and you're choking. That's not, 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 not how I work. You don't have to have money to choke on money, to choke on the riches. You're like, I'm not doing it because I ain't got choke. I'll do it when I get such and such choke. <laughs> pressure. Little, little bit of pressure. Fail. Lost the game. Dropped the ball. Missed it. Whew. He says, cares. Riches and pleasures of life. And they bring no fruit to perfection, which means completion. Why don't they bring anything to completion? They can't. They choke. They failed. They lost. When? When a little bit of pressure came on. What are they going to say if I don't get healed? What? 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 What does it matter? You're letting what they say distract you by giving it more power, more place, more ability than what God says. It's interesting. That, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a way to go. That's the way, that's way most go, but I'm not going that way. Y'all familiar with choking? Y'all know what choking is? Game's on the line. They're streaking down the sideline. Coverage is busted. Man, that ball's spun in there, dropped in there like a bucket, and right through the bucket. Right through. Everybody sees. Time's out. Oh. Choke. Game's tied. Two runners on. Full count. Three and two. Step off the plate a second, readjust your grip, step in there. <laughs> Swing and a miss. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't a tied game. It was 3-2, two, two runners on in the ninth and three full pitch. And Swing and a miss. Choke. And, and what they do? Break the bat. The bat didn't do it. The bat. <laughs> <laughs> Pounded the thing. The bat didn't, that was you. The bat didn't do it. Choke. Last five meters of the hundred. Oh, no. Look at y'all. Look at y'all. Look at y'all. Oh, we're going to take everybody down. That's right. Yeah, get in there. Cramp, stretch, trip. Splat. After three or four people pass you at that tape. Choo -choo 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 -choo.
You're at the recital. Everybody's quiet. Everybody's waiting for the first. <laughs> Plonk. Wrong note. Wrong note. Swing and a miss. And everybody's like, what? The, what? I didn't come here to hear that. Every, why are these stinking people choking? Because they're choosing to be weak. Why? What are they, th- what are they thinking? Yeah, lining up the putt, lining up the putt, lining up the putt. Woo! U.S. Open, it's only a three-foot putt. Break slightly to the right. Oh! Pushed it. Oh! This is why I study winners. I ain't got time for losers. If you study losers, you a you a multiplied loser. Don't make no sense. Don't do nothing. You lose. The reason people lose is when I used to lose was because it's what I thought about. What's going to happen if I miss it? Who the hell? You already missed it. Choked it. And people live this way. I started listening to winners and observing. Even before I came to Christ, you know what they don't think about? Losing. I'm a student of people. I mean, Lee Trevino. Gangster, mm-hmm. Hall of Fame, Hispanic golfer, mm-hmm. and, and with Ch- Chai Chai Rodriguez, Rodriguez. That's when I, that, I pronounced the man's name one time. He Puerto Rican. He another awesome golfer. But they were asked one time, like, you get over those putts, you know, like that, because they played the big time. Isn't that? You get over those putts, isn't that? You know, all that money's on the line. You know, if you win, you know, if you miss the putt, you go down the board, and all the money's by the board. And he just sat there, and I'll never forget. He said, just cool. He's like, it ain't my money. <laughs> you act like I'm standing over that putt, and I'm going to lose my money. All I can do is take more of theirs. <laughs> Why you think the crap way you think? Not you, not you, not you, the one over there and the one over there. <laughs> You're choosing that. That's a loser's mentality. And I can prophesy to you right now. Don't, don't wonder. You're going to 100. You winning would be a miracle. And that's the difference between the kingdom of God and the world. World always got a backup way on. Trying to hedge their bit. Kind of, you know, mm-mm. Kingdom of God, I don't make it, we dying. That's it, God. You don't come through, it's on you. It's your fault. You're going to get blamed. I've taught you this before. God doesn't do it for you. He does it for his name's sake. He does it for his reputation. So, Lord, Christian fellowship don't work. I don't care. (laughs) Ain't my name. I didn't call me. You did. So I'm playing with house money. I what if you don't do it, Pastor? I don't even know what you're talking about. What'd you say? <laughs> what, what, what if you mess up? How can I mess up when I'm following him? When I have fired myself. When I hate my life, I deny myself, and I take up my cross. I can't, how, how can I? It's, I, I? That math don't even track. Can't lose. Even when you think I lose. It's just to delay the greater victory over here. Because I needed to learn something. I I used to refuse to lose. I just don't. Okay. See, that that was a sorry response. No, that, that sucks. Y'all haters. Y'all haters. I can smell it up here. That's hate. Who? He never lose. I can't talk about you. I can only lead you, and you can make the same choice yourself. No one, you're the only one that can make that choice. I'm not going to look at the negative. Everybody know the negative there. I need something. How am I going to avoid the negative? 
I got to have something greater. And there's nothing greater than the Most High God and his promises. He spoke his word for this ministry this year. He told you, good times and hard times. And they talking about China, Russia, take your pick, who this and that. Pastor, haven't you heard? They're going to knock out our grid. They're going to take it down. People are going to die, this and that. The word of God tells me, there shall no evil befall you. Woo! Wait, wait, what'd you say, Lord? No evil shall befall you. Neither shall any plague come near your house, Rick. I've given my angels the responsibility over you to keep you in all your ways. How can I mess this up? They have to bear you up in their hands lest you stub your toe. Let me tell you why, Rick. Not because you're special, but because you put your trust on me. And I will be with you. You will call and I will answer. I will be with you in trouble. Ain't it hot? I don't know. Is it hot? I don't know. Be with you in trouble. Sound like Hannah and I, Michelle, and Azariah in the fire. He went. He said, I'll be with you and I'll deliver you. No, no, we ain't going to tie. We ain't going to. And I'll deliver you. Woo! And then he says, I'll honor you. You know, the Bible means I'm going to pay you. Glory to God. He said, I will satisfy you with long life. And get this. Oh, get this. Glory to God. 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 Glory that's deliverance. Now, see, I got to pay attention. I can't think about the world. What does that mean? My deliverance, I'll show you, Rick. My healing, I'll show you. My safety, I'll show you. My provision, I'll show you. My deliverance, I'll show you. All together, because you can't segment it up, says the Lord, if it's my salvation. Now, see, y'all, and, and, and we can end. Most pastors are going to end. Woo, they, oh, oh, but, you know, why can't you be this out there? Don't worry about why. Just say, I can. Waste too much time on the useless. And don't hardly give any time to the true. You choose life, you're going to get the blessing. Period. You choose death, you won't be cursed all your days. Period. But God's called heaven and earth to record what you choose. No one can choose for you, and no one can stop you from choosing. Because God already chose for every one of you. Every one of us, God already chose to choose life. You couldn't choose life if he hadn't chose it for you first. He didn't say, don't choose. He didn't say nothing about that. He says, choose life. And then he said that, that you might love me. And you'd be blessed. Oh, so to love God, you have to choose life and blessing. All these people talking about, but I love the Lord. Not with that thinking. Not with those thoughts that you allow to roll around in your cranium that he made, by the way. What if I miss it? Crap. Illegal. You ain't allowed to be his and think like that. No, straight up. Now you can be you. But you can't be his. We're going we gonna to try this if it don't work out. Again. No, 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 no. That ain't the kingdom. No, nope. no. Nope. See, because you're looking at what? And you're talking about what? Failure. So you're going to, whatever you look at, whatever you talk about, it's called faith. It's faith or fear. It's fear, and you're going to have it. It's a law. It's not a threat. It's a guarantee. That's why God gave you the power. That power is called choice. But he tells you what to do with said choice that he's given you. So not even he 
can change your choice. Oh, but you know, China, they're amassing a billion person army, da 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 da. But the Lord said, I will never leave you nor forsake you so that you may boldly declare God is my helper and I read my lips ain't scared of what a billion people can do. Those are odds God lives by. Make it two billion. Let's get this thing over with. Do you all believe the Bible? Yes. Really? Yes. Then you know what's coming. Then you know what's coming. It ain't a vote. It's not a gathering. A little picket side parade. It's a war. And that war is a slaughter. Absolute slaughter. Nobody dying on this side. All the two billion plus dead. No one's escaping. It's been written, it's been said. God has to perform his word. But nobody made the two billion plus wanna hate God. They chose us. And just like you got excited, oh, God gave me the power to choose. Well, everybody. Listen to this about ten times this week. You'll get it. That's why, like, you can't worry about somebody else. You got to get the stick out of your own eye. <laughs> God didn't give you the assignment. Straighten them out. Thank you, Lord. Okay. It, it takes the miracle working power of God. Straighten yourself out with his help. Ask me how I know. Father, we thank you, bless you, and praise you for your word that it is true, that it can never return to you without performing and accomplishing what you sent it to do and prospering us to whom you sent it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That we are now made aware and we can lay aside every weight that you warned us can so easily take us out. Offenses, opinions, ours or others, persecution, and fear. So that we can run this race to completion, to the finish, gaining the crown that you yourself delivered to us and everyone who successfully completes it. We fight the good fight of faith. We keep this faith. And as you promised, there's a crown laid up for each and every one of us who love your appearing, Jesus. All do we, do we expect, do we anticipate, are we excited about your appearing? For Jesus, you came to change everything. You came and put a body on and walked this earth in order to destroy the work of the devil over everyone, render them useless to everyone who puts their trust in you. So we bless you and praise you and thank you. That's a primary way of letting our light so shine that you deliver us. You bring us out of what everybody else is dealing with so they can see our good works. They can see that it's you and not us and glorify you so that you can continue to draw them closer to you so they can have a personal relationship with you whereby you are able to save them completely, spirit, soul, and body. What a privilege, what an honor it is. Thank you for choosing us. We didn't choose you. You called us. Thank you for allowing us to answer. You are shield and exceeding great reward. We cannot lose. We walk by faith and not by sight. Everyone who's in agreement with this prayer, say amen. Amen.